My name is Lucas, and I'm an engineer on Google Web Designer. In this video, I will show how to use groups. Groups are a way of encapsulating content into reusable assets. And to show what this means, I'm going to start with a simple example. I add an image to stage, and I add some text as well. So I'll type in the text, and I will format it a little bit, maybe center it, uh, make it bold, tweak the size of the text box a little bit. OK, now I select both elements, and I right click and go to Create Group, and I enter a name, My Group. Now I see that in the Asset Library, I have a new entry for that group, and the elements on stage have been replaced by an instance of this group. I can add new instances by drag and dropping from the asset library. Each of these instances is a reference to the group's contents, which means that if I edit any one instance, the changes are reflected in both. So for example, I will change the text, and I will create a simple animation where I first fade the text out to zero opacity, and then I fade it back in to opacity 1. And now if I play the animation, we see that both instances are identical. To see how this works behind the scenes, we can switch to code view. So here in code view, I see a block that has all of my groups. There's only one. It has an image, and it has some text. And then here in the main document, are my two instances. Each instance is an empty div that refers to the group by name. When you publish the document, we inject the contents of the group into each instance, so the instances are guaranteed to always be identical. Groups can contain any content that you can build in Google Web Designer, including instances of other groups. For example, here I'll add another instance. Maybe I'll style it a bit differently by giving it a border. And then I will add an additional element, let's say a div. And then I select both and create another group. So as before, if I edit one of the instances, then those changes are reflected in all instances, regardless of where they appear. If I delete all the instances from stage, then the groups themselves don't disappear. They are still in the asset library, and I can still add additional instances on stage. If you want to delete a group entirely in the asset library, you can right click on it and select Delete. This context menu also gives a few other options. For example, I can rename the group, call it Teapot. You can duplicate the group, which creates a new group whose contents are a clone of the original. And finally, you can edit the group in a separate view. This last option is useful if you don't have any instances on stage, uh, or if the stage is cluttered and you want to just look at the group in isolation. So I'll select that, and now I'll do some more editing. Uh, in this case, I'll add a colored background to the group, and I'll do that by drawing a div, change its color a little bit, and then I will send it to the back. And once I'm done editing, I click on the root of the breadcrumb, and now I'm back on stage. I see the changes have been reflected in all of my instances, and if I add a new instance, it also has those same changes. That completes this introduction to groups. In the next video, I'll show how we can add interactivity to groups by adding events to them. Thank you for watching.